Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, episode 37, Anoint Thy Head and Wash Thy Face, a guided Christian meditation podcast on Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. So I work as a hospice chaplain, and I've worked as an ICU chaplain, and my purpose in making this podcast is to help you to find more peace in your life, and to be open to be changed by the Spirit of God. We use a centuries-old Christian meditation style called Lectio Divina. What we'll do is we'll begin with relaxation, followed by a reading from the Bible. We'll meditate on the meaning, and we'll pray to God, asking for His guidance and insight. We'll sit in contemplative silence, awaiting His answers. And then we'll visualize how we can incorporate the answers and insights we receive into our lives. Find a place where you can sit uninterrupted for the next 20 minutes. And if you feel comfortable to do so, close your eyes now. In this moment, loosen your focus. Feel the air around you. What is the temperature of the air that gently surrounds you? Feel it as it eases into your lungs. As you breathe in, you feel it calm you. As you breathe in, you feel it bring calm. As you breathe out, you feel the tension in your body escape. You feel your shoulders settle in. Your face unflexes. Your shoulder blades soften. Each part of your body eases. This moment is for peace. This moment is your time with the Spirit of God. Gently embrace this moment. There's no need to hold on tightly, just enjoy what is present. As you sit in quiet reflection, a growing feeling of contentment begins to fill your body. Little by little, you feel the ease of body associated with contentment. Hope is building inside of you. Take this in. Take this all in. 
Allow this feeling of calm to be absorbed into your body. It's absorbed into your bones and muscles. It's absorbed into every part of you. The Spirit of the Lord can inhabit you. Breathe in calmly. Now we'll read a verse from the Bible from Matthew chapter 6 verses 16 through 18. As we do continue relaxing and breathing deeply and allow these words to penetrate your mind. Jesus is speaking here on the Sermon on the Mount. And he says in verse 16, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Pause and reflect on the meaning of this scripture. What is its message for you right now? As I prepare to read from the King James translation, notice similarities, but also differences. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. What does this scripture mean to you? Continue breathing deeply as you ponder this meaning. something that I spend a great deal of time thinking about, the ideas of human suffering. In an effort not to be overwhelmed, our efforts to accept suffering can sometimes confuse us and cause us to value suffering for its own sake. The scripture shows us that suffering in and of itself is not a source of glory. We need not admire suffering we need not relish in it. We endure suffering in the pursuit of God. And we endure suffering to pursue something greater than this world. Willingness to endure suffering for the cause of God does not equate to the pursuit of suffering. As you endure suffering in your life, reflect for a moment to what end do you suffer? Why do you suffer? Are there areas in your life where you place value on suffering for its own sake? What way can you follow God while at the same time giving up any unnecessary suffering?
During the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us that the opinions of others, or arguably even our own, matter little when it comes to how we bear the hardships we encounter. We struggle for our Lord, whether it's fasting or any other religious devotion. We resist the things of the world to place value on the things of God and to do what He has asked us. Please join me in prayer. Dear Father, we lift our voices to Thee, asking for guidance, ease from our suffering. We ask for insight. We ask for guidance. Teach us and show us how we can better follow Thee and endure what we need to endure. Dear Father, please fill our hearts with humility as we evaluate how we can change. Please speak peace to our hearts and teach us. And we will attempt to follow and to learn. And this we say in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I invite you to continue in prayer now. I'll give you a couple more seconds. All right. Now, during this next piece, we sit in silence, not reflecting intentionally, intellectually on this scripture, but just being in this moment of peace. I'll give you a couple more seconds. All right. Now, hopefully by this point, you've gained some powerful insights. Continue breathing deeply and relaxed and stay in this focused state. As we now incorporate the things that we've experienced, both felt and thought into our lives, I want you to visualize now how you can apply the ideas and the thoughts that you've had in your life. The way you can do this is by visualizing what your life would be like if the insights that you gained were implemented. How would you live differently? How would you speak differently to others? How would your relationship with God change? Try to live in this positive moment for a while with as much detail as possible.
Now I want you to imagine how you would explain the things that you've learned here today to someone else. As we reflect on how we would teach others, we truly learn. So what message are you walking away with today that can help you be different? Try to visualize telling that to someone else. I'll give you a couple more seconds. All right. Stay with me for a moment. At the end, I'm going to have a final thought and a reflection question, but right now I want to say a couple things. I release a new episode every Sunday morning at 1 a.m. Mountain Time in the U.S., and last week is the first time I did a reflection question or a homework, and I received a lot of really good feedback. I loved hearing about the things that you consider as your still waters. So many things I heard about, including family, the peace of God, ease from anxiety, and so many others. I hope to continue this thought, this, this reflection, So here's the thought for this week. What areas of suffering in your life can be given up? What aspects of your suffering can be given up while still being committed entirely to God? So here's the final thought. We're social beings and we desire the good opinion of others. Many times the people who most vocally say that they don't want approval from others are secretly the ones who want it the most. There's no judgment in my heart when I say these things because I experience the same human instinct. So I hope that this reflection can be a guide for us to continually improve as we let go of the pride that can draw our hearts away from God, we're able to focus more clearly on the pursuit of obedience to God. As we follow in the same chapter, chapter 6 in Matthew, later on, Jesus says that we should first seek the kingdom of God and that all other blessings will be poured out upon us. In His time, and as we endure, and learn to endure the pains of this world. May God continue to bless you and me as we continually attempt to walk with His Spirit. I know that if we do this, He will be present in our lives and He will walk with us. He will fill our hearts with peace, but also determination to improve, and we can follow. And if we do, we will be so much the better. And this I say in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.